Alright, so I'm back here once again. This time I'm here to give you guys an album review for 2 Chainz. So help me God. So for the most part, since he dropped his last album, I can't really say 2 Chainz have been quiet. He didn't drop the he didn't drop the compilation album. He dropped the compilation album earlier this year called No Face, No Case. And he's been popping up on singles here and there too. Not to mention the single that he dropped right before this album came out, uh, Quarantine Thick with Mulatto. So... A bro, two chains is doing normal two chain shit at this point. So with this album cover, I ain't even gonna lie. Like it's a it's a picture of a younger version of him. So that made me feel like this album gonna be, you know what I'm saying, sort of personal in a way. And I do feel like he do got some of those personal traits on here. So getting into the album, he started the song off with Lambo Rich. Uh Lambo Rich to me, it's it's a nice song, but at the same time. I really feel like Gray Area should have been like the first song. Like you could probably switch Lambo Rich and Gray Area with each other. But Gray Area, that's like straight to the point. Like this, this is gonna be some hard ass shit. And Gray Area, legit, like production wise, it might be my favorite song on here, man. Because like I just feel like it, it, it went off and it just set like a certain mood for like the entire album going forward. I can't tell if that's a damn distorted horn or distorted piano or something playing in the background. The thing is going. Save Me was a dope track and I really wasn't expecting it to go in the direction that it did. I like what they did production wise and I like how they flipped that sample. Money Maker was an okay song. I always feel like 2 Chainz is always going to have a song like this on one of his projects. It was okay in the Lil Wayne verse. It was it was decent. Can't go for that. There's another one production wise that caught my ear, and then it got Lil Duval and Ty Dolla Sign. Ty Dolla Sign pretty much just crooning all through this mug, and I ain't even gonna lie. Like with Ty Dolla Sign on here, like it could have, I I could do without him on on here, but at the same time I do like the addition that he bring. Lil Duval, I love everything that he brought because I feel like he sort of added to like that smoothness. Of the track, I ain't never really just listen to a Lil Duval project if they if it is one not, but at the same time I do be noticing like he be just like he just remix like old ass songs and kind of like throw like this modern spin on it. That's like prime example is Best Life in the song that that samples. But yeah, bro, I like Lil, I like Lil Duval on this song and like production wise, this is one of the more smoother tracks I've heard from Two Chains. For the song Tony, I really like how he interprets um the Jeezy song. Jeezy like the drink, Jeezy like the smoke. Jeezy like the Miss Arm and Hammer with his coat. Like I like when he like I like him using that style of rapping on this song right here, sort of reminiscent or whatever, especially with all like the, the verses battles and stuff going on with uh Gucci and, and Jeezy going on later on. Then the sudden switch out of nowhere to the classic David Banner like a pimp track. Bruh, five. Fire. Two chains always got a knack for doing that junk. Like just coming out of nowhere, bro, with just some fire ass production and like just some 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 fire ass sampling. I like the production of the song Southside Hove and I like just the overall message. And it's crazy because he, he was saying like he been trying to get a Jay Z verse forever and he just pretty much gave up on it. So instead of him doing this, like shoot, I just sample your shit and, and, and use it for this. So jumping into the features that he had on here, like this junk is pretty star studded. Starting out with the NBA Youngboy feature, like just that song as a whole, I really wasn't expecting that to go in the direction that it went in. That sort of turned into like one of those, uh, sort of like a personal song, sort of like a more more serious song. Kind of wanted like some turn up, shoot em up type of music, but at the same time, I'm okay with what we got. And like I said, that sample was nice. I wasn't really messing with Lil Wayne verse on Moneymaker, especially like he used the damn auto tune junk. And I'm gonna be real, like the verse, it was, it, it was. Pretty mid. You should know by now. Like if I if I hear Lil Wayne, like I I don't want to hear no damn auto tune. I need to hear Wayne regular voice because that's when I feel like he he go the damn hardest. So with Ty Dolla Sign, like I said earlier, like I feel like this is one of them trash where I don't know. I feel like he ain't really he ain't really need him on here for real. Then Lil Duval overall, like I like his feature more so on this song than anything. I feel like he. Just the type of stuff that Lil Duval doing, he fits this track perfectly. Feel away with Kanye West and Brent Fayez. I've been on Brent Fayez like super hard lately. And it's nice to hear him on the feature verse being used for like a damn chorus or something. And Kanye came kind of close to the end of the song with like a damn peekaboo verse. But I like what he presented. And then it's like he's st he staying true to like what he's saying as far as about like um him not making certain type of music because the stuff he was talking about within the verse 
that that sort of coincides with it as well. And he started naming all different black figures that was going through some type of slave like situation. He named Nat Turner, Frank Ocean, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, Nelson Mandela among those. Quarantine Thick, I had already heard the song prior to hearing the album, but at the same time, Mulatto, she got off on this junk, and I really feel like people need to start looking at Mulatto more, bro. She just a damn, the way she rapped on this shit, bro, she just sound like a damn bully, bro, and I love that shit. Like, low-key, she give me something that Megan Thee Stallion don't, in a way. Kevin Gates on Ziploc, bro. I've been sleep on Kevin Gates for, like, a long time. I can't even say I've been sleep on Kevin Gates. It's just some of his stuff, it be hit or miss with me. And this one of them verses on here that hit with me, that got me like, okay, maybe I, maybe I need to go listen a little harder. But he went the hell off on this track. He, he killed this shit. Free Lighter with Lil Uzi and Chief Keef. I ain't even gonna lie. Starting out, bro, that production, bro, it threw me off a lot. But at the same time, the more and more I listen to it, the more it grow on me. Chief Keef sounded like Chief Keef on here, and Lil Uzi sounded like Lil Uzi on here. For the most part, both of these features was okay, but the thing that draws my attention the most to this song, for real, for real, is the uh, production. It's a little weird and throw it off. And then the song with Rick Ross and Schooley. Production-wise, I wasn't really feeling that song. And I don't know, bro. I'm just not a fan of the Schooly dude for real like that. Schooly, he's one of them people that's been in it for a long time. And I feel like he sort of helped, like, shape the state of hip-hop that we in now. As far as people, like, being more melodic in their verses and all that junk like that. Uh, Rick Ross was great on here. Rick Ross was the shit. I feel like he didn't put together a nice run of just feature verses. And this is another one to add to the list. So, yeah. So, yeah, overall, I'm feeling this project. The production on here is nice. And 2 chains, like, far as his rapping ability... Um, he's, he hasn't lost a step. He, he hasn't really lost a step. Overall, I'm feeling this project. To me, it's sort of like your typical 2 change project, you know. As far as if I want to put this project over his last project, I ain't gonna do that because the last project was stellar and even now Pretty Girls Love Trap Music. Like, that's one of my... That, that's probably my favorite 2 Chainz project, but nah, I can't put this one over these two, but I do like it for what it is. If I had to rate this album out of a 10 right now, I'd probably give it a 7. So yeah, that being said, let me know how y'all feel about this project in the comment section. Let me know if I was wrong about anything. Please feel free to correct me. Also, if you guys have your own music or anything like that that you guys want to get featured on the channel, feel free to DM me. Also, be sure to hit that notification bell so you can get notification every time I drop a video. And yeah, man, this is T-Sign out once again. Thank y'all for watching this. Peace.